another story that I found the other day that was really interesting was that Canada banned bans cruise ships for a year, blocking trips from Alaska. So at first, I was a little confused about this because I was like, well, how does Canada banning cruise ships for a year block ships from going to Alaska? It didn't make sense because Alaska is a, US, is a U.S. state and it shouldn't really have anything to do with Canada. But essentially the way it works is there's a U.S. federal law that prohibits foreign registered ships from sailing between two American ports without stopping at a foreign port between. So essentially if a cruise ship is a foreign registered ship, which most of them are, most of them aren't based in the U.S. So if it's registered in a foreign country, it has to stop at another country Um before stopping at in another American port. So essentially, these ships are registered outside the U.S. So even though, let's say, it might be going from Washington to Alaska, during that trip, it has to stop at a foreign port, which would be Canada, in between. And if Canada is banning cruise vessels from being in Canadian waters for the next year, well, then it's going to block cruise ships from going to Alaska altogether. Cruise ships have been struggling. Their stock prices have been down a lot recently. We've seen them start to recover, but this is a pretty big hit to the cruise industry because a lot of trips do go to Canada. You know, Caribbean's our popular destination, but also Alaska is a pretty popular destination for tourists. So most of Alaska's 1.3 million visitors two years ago were cruise ship passengers. That means more money for the economy in Alaska, and a lot of these cities rely on cruise ships to be able to pay their bills. And without cruise ships coming, they're not going to have any money from the tourism industry. One city in particular that really relies on this is a lot of these cities in southeast Alaska, where they're port communities that rely on tourism to generate money for their, their families and for the economy. Last year, and with the pandemic and Canadian restrictions that were already in place in 2020, only 48 cruise ship passengers, 48 passengers, that's it, visited the Southeast Alaska Juno-based rain, like Juno-based um, port. That's it. That's only 48 people. So a lot of people thought that this restriction from Canada was going to be implemented for another, let's say, three months, probably until the summer months. But they just input a whole year more on top of this. They expanded the restriction for another year, and that's going to have dramatic impacts on the economy in these cities and in Alaska. A lot of people say that they're going to need help. Their businesses and cruises, cruise ships, and these Alaskan cities are going to need help. They're not going to be able to really survive, pay their bills, do everything because a large part of their economy is tourism. And without cruise ships being able to go there and that being the main way that tourists go to Alaska, well, that's going to be a big issue. It's not like Hawaii, for example, where a lot of people fly. Alaska is a place where a lot of people take cruise ships and this restriction basically cuts off their entire tourism industry for the next year. So that's a pretty big thing. And it's going to affect stocks like Carnival Cruise Lines, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean, and all these other companies in the space that have trips that go from the US to Alaska. I'll have to see how that plays out, but it's not really a good sign um, for these companies. If you're invested in cruise ship stocks, I would just be careful with this restriction in place because it is a you know pretty significant portion of their business. Don't.